All right, this is the second of two presentations on absorption versus variable overhead, and what we're going to do is just compare financial statement outcomes from the two methods. And you, just so you know, this looks like it's really straightforward and everything, but when you go to do it, um, it can get complicated. So get it really clearly in your head so you're all set to, to go forward. And this will be shorter than the last one. I know that was long. Okay, so the difference in inventory arises because the absorption costing includes fixed MOH, okay, is a product cost and variable costing excludes it and sends it to the income statement in the period it was incurred. Okay, so it's so the whole thing is expensed as, as a period cost. That's how it treats it. And as long as there are units on hand, absorption costings inventory balance will always be higher than variable costings. Okay, because it includes fixed MOH as a product cost and variable costing doesn't. It, it considers it a period cost, so the whole thing is flushed out in, in the period. Now here are, here's an example. This is Emilio's. He has um, the budgeted operating expense is $250 per unit. Here's our fixed operating expense. Hmm, fixed operating is $170,000. So fixed operating means um, not manufacturing. Okay, just fixed operating, $170,000. Budgeted variable manufacturing is $12 per unit. Budgeted fixed manufacturing is $240,000. Okay, and budgeted production is 60,000 units. And budgeted selling price is $26 per unit. So this one on the top now, that's budgeted variable operating expense. Okay, budgeted variable operating. So on an absorption costing statement, this is going to be below gross margin. On a um, contribution margin, a variable costing format, that's going to be above the contribution margin because it's variable. Okay, so here are, here are our assumptions. We're going to start out, mm, oh yeah, start out with zero beginning inventory. We're going to produce 55,000, <coughs> then sell 52,000. Okay, so we'll have 3,000 in ending inventory. And here they are, that's our beginning inventory next year. We produce 60,000 and we sell 62. Okay, so we produce, we sell everything that we make plus some, two, well, we sell our beginning inventory. Okay, if you're going to use a FIFO assumption, which is another whole issue here, we're going to use our beginning inventory and then 59,000 of the actual production from this year. And here it is so that you can see it. Here's, here's what's going to be on the balance sheet under absorption costing. Uh, fixed goods inventory is 3,000 units at $16 a piece. So that's $12 variable manufacturing plus $4 fixed MOH. Okay, so we've got $4 per unit as manufacturing overhead. Under variable costing, those 3,000 units are just in there $12 per unit. That is only the variable manufacturing cost per unit, or 36000 Okay, so you can see that the inventory value is higher under absorption because that fixed manufacturing overhead is in there. Under variable costing, it's lower. Okay, and then in year two, um, the 1,000 units, 1,000 units times 60, 16, this is inventory, okay, we're talking about. We've got 1,000 units left. Those 1,000 units at $16 a unit are worth 16000 under variable costing, those thousand units at twelve dollars per unit are worth twelve thousand. Okay, so let's see what happens. The year one difference is twelve thousand. That's the three thousand units times four dollars of fixed manufacturing overhead per unit. <coughs> Excuse me. Just so you understand, um, this isn't here just for your edification. Okay, for you to sort of see what's going on. You're going to have to reconcile the differences. In, in, netting, in operating income between absorption and variable costing. And that difference is going to be the 3,000 units of inventory at $4 per unit. Okay? The year two difference, the year two difference is 4,000, 16 minus, minus 12, or 1,000 units of inventory times that $4 fixed manufacturing overhead rate per unit. So the two methods, um, 
cost of goods sold, operating income, and income statement impacts. I mean, I'm sure you can imagine the questions that come from this, okay? So, you know, given these two methods, what is the impact on cost of goods sold, operating income, and the income statement? Okay, given the gap-based absorption costing income statements product versus period organization, right? So under a gap-based income statement, our product costs are at the top, and then our period costs are below, okay? All operating costs are shown below gross margin. Okay, given the variable cost and contribution margin organization of cost by cost behavior, all variable costs, whether product or period, are um, above the are part of the contribution margin. Okay, so we've got manufacturing and ma non manufacturing costs located above the contribution margin, and the only what they have in common is that they're both variable. Okay. And within the variable costing uh, contribution margin income statement, all fixed costs, whether manufacturing or non-manufacturing, are below the contribution margin. Okay, so variable costs are up above, then you've got a contribution margin, then all your fixed costs below. So here's our, here are our same assumptions. This is Emilio's again. Um, and like this is budgeted variable operating expense. So you know what this could be is selling expenses. It might be a commission per unit or something like that. Okay, two fifty per unit. Then we've got budgeted fixed operating is one seventy. Budgeting fixed manufacturing is two forty. So we've got pretty healthy um, fixed costs here. Budgeted variable manufacturing is twelve dollars per unit. Our production is estimated production is sixty thousand units, and our budgeted selling price is twenty six thousand. Okay, in the same same numbers here. So we produce fifty five, sell fifty two, start the year with three thousand in inventory, produce another sixty thousand, and then sell sixty two. So we've got one thousand left in inventory. <clears throat> um, so here, we're so. Um, Remember that you're observing not only two different inventory costing methods, but also the income statement format that accomp accompanies each method. And that's a really good point, that we might have a difference between um, absorption versus variable costing, okay? But also the income statement format, so the income statement will completely change, okay? Because we'll have a product versus period costs on an absorption-based statement, and a um, variable versus fixed costs on a contribution-based statement. And here's an example of these statements. I hope you can see these. I tried to make them bigger, but it's it's um they would have been better taking a picture of the image, put it that way. So here's our on the absorption basis. Our let's just go down, there's our cost of goods sold, and then there's the volume variance, okay, of, of twenty thousand dollars, which is increasing cost of goods sold. Here's our, our gross margin, and then variable and fixed operating expenses gives us income, an operating income of 200000 So our next year, here are our sales. There's cost of goods sold. There's no volume variance. Um, adjusted cost of goods sold is 992 Okay, so our gross margin is 620 Here are our operating expenses, again, variable and fixed. So income is 295 Now, this volume variance, okay, we're going to talk about it um, in more detail later, but you basically know what it is, okay, but we'll look at it harder later. And let's see if I can move this just a little bit. I can't. Um, yep, that's it. Okay, so, hmm, operating income, darn it, operating income in this case is, um, is we had 200000 on absorption basis. It's going to be 188000 here for variable costing in the first year because all of that fixed manufacturing overhead was deducted. Okay, all of it, no matter how many units we sold. In the second year, though, when we clean out that inventory and it moves through the income statement, we've got 295000 of operating income under absorption. Under variable costing, we've got 303. 303,000. Now you can look at this example in the textbook. Okay, it's the same one that's in there, so you can see all the numbers. Okay, I wish I could move this around a little bit, but I can't. I really can't. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. There we go. At least you can see the incomes, okay? 200 compared to 188, and then 295 in the second year when that inventory comes out and that fixed overhead 
ends up, you know, goes through operating income, and then 303 in a variable costing format. And there's a summary of that, okay? Here is the, um, is the operating income. Got to move this back again. There we go. So, so this is, um, sorry. There we go. Okay, so absorption costing income, year one, year two. Variable costing income, uh, the, the difference between the two is the is 12000 in the first year, 8000 in the second year. And this is because the fixed manufacturing overhead is increasing this number. And then when it comes out of inventory and goes into cost of goods sold, um, it's going to decrease, decrease the income. Okay. So focus on the change in inventory and shifting of costs to or from the balance sheet. And I'll, I'll tell you, as an auditor or any kind of an accountant, um, we, we spend, in school, we spend a lot of time looking at income statement impacts. And, you know, we know what's on the balance sheet and everything, but the balance sheet at work is critical, is really important. So that's something you really want to spend some time on. <clears throat> okay, so under absorption costing, inventory increased by 3,000 units times the $4 fixed overhead cost per unit, or $12,000. Okay? I keep saying okay. i got to stop that. All right. Now here's the product cost under absorption costing. 52,000 units at $16 per unit, plus the volume variance is eight fifty two. dollars Under variable costing, our actual cost of goods sold, remember these are just variable costs, is $624,000. The whole fixed manufacturing overhead is expensed, so our, our product costs are 864, okay, which is higher than under absorption because some of these costs, 12,000 of them, are sitting in inventory, and that's the difference right there. Okay, so under absorption costing, inventory was reduced by 2,000 units times $4 or 8,000. Um, this is in second year, in the second year, okay? And it was shifted from the balance sheet to the income statement. So it comes out of inventory on the balance sheet and moves into cost of goods sold on the income statement. Okay? This doesn't work well, does it? Let's see. There. Okay. Okay, that's it. So that's a lot shorter than the last one. And we'll do some problems and you'll be all ready for Thursday.